So welcome back to another FIFA 19 career mode video. Today we have another episode of the things that don't make sense in FIFA 19 career mode. Today we're going to be talking about a few different things that happen in career mode that don't really line up with reality. And I'm also going to be showing you guys a few clips that you guys have sent in as well. Remember if you enjoy the video, leave a thumbs up for me. Let's get to 700 likes. And if you're new around here and you want to see more of this series on the channel, hit the subscribe button today and the notification bell and you won't miss anything. And by the way, if you want to buy some real life Ultimate Team cards for your favorite icons and players, check out the link in the description and use my code VAPEX for 5% off. Each episode features the things that you guys send in, so if you want to leave something for a future episode, leave a comment down below or you can send me your videos on Instagram or Twitter. Now when you go to the training menus in FIFA 19 career mode, whenever a player has like a chart thing above their age, it usually means they're an exciting prospect and you should train them a bit more because they have a higher chance of growing to a better overall. Usually this happens to younger players like 21 or 22 and players obviously that have high potentials. But this photo sent in by QTN shows a 28 year old with the exciting prospect tag on him. In this case we have Yarmolenko who's already 28, 80 overall going on to 81 overall and he has the graph on top of his age there. Now obviously this doesn't make sense because we all know by the time the player reaches 30, he's going to become a pensioner. So how can he be an exciting prospect if in two years time in career mode, his stats are going to start decreasing heavily. This next one comes from Liam. He says, when you loan someone in from Chelsea, that player can play against Chelsea in FIFA career mode. But in real life, you cannot play against the team who actually owns you. Now, apparently in the Premier League, according to Wikipedia anyway, it says players on loan are not permitted to play against the team which holds their registration. Loanees are, however, allowed to play against their owning clubs in cup competitions unless they have played for the owning club in that cup during that season. So this rule does apply to all the clubs, not just Chelsea. And you can see, for this example, we're going to use Kurt Zuma, who is currently on loan at Everton in the real world and in my season in career mode as well. So what I've done is simulated all the way to an Everton match in the Premier League. And we're going to check the lineups here using two controllers so I don't have to go into the game. And when we take a look at the team management, you can see for Everton, Kurt Zuma is ready to go as the captain of Everton, and he's playing as a centre-back. So, from what I've understood, this shouldn't be happening. I think I got this one right, that's why I put it in the video, because sometimes when I'm not familiar about a concept, I do a bit of research. Sometimes I can still get it wrong, sometimes I read the wrong information or I misunderstood it. I do try my best to get things as accurate as possible, but sometimes I do make mistakes. And of course, if I got this one wrong, leave a comment down below. So this one was sent in by Rishab, and he says the commentator says the wrong team when they lifted the cup. So he was Barcelona, he won the Champions League, and Barcelona lifted the trophy. But as they did that, I'm not sure if you can hear it in the clip. You might hear it a little bit. I'll do my best to boost the volume on it. But Derek Ray does say Manchester United have the cup, which is totally incorrect because it's Barcelona. Manchester United. I did experience this issue once as well, but I didn't have a chance to record it. But when I heard it, I was like, what the hell's going on, you know? So this one comes in from Usman. He noticed something with the news tile. He says, this is a Europa League preview article, but Koulibaly's shirt has a Premier League patch on it. So let's take a look at the clip. This is the article. Avoiding a loss against Viteze, we'll see Arsenal go through in the Europa League. On Aubameyang's jersey, it's got the UEFA Respect badge, which is what it's supposed to have. But then on Koulibaly's jersey, it's got the Premier League patch and uh, the sponsor there as well. So obviously it doesn't make sense because the article is promoting a Europa League game, so the jerseys should have the Champions League patch on them, but the news articles are pretty bad this year. They have a lot of bugs, and I think this is another one. This next one comes from Juan. He said, one of his players in January agreed to a pre-contract to join another team at the end of the season in June, but in April, uh, during the season still, he got an email from that player asking him to leave in the next transfer window. And as you can see through the images that were supplied by one, he had a guy called Alex Fisher joining the Western Sydney Wanderers when the transfer window opens, and you can see that in the squad hub. And then on the 1st of April 2019, when the season is about to end, maybe two months to go, Alex Fisher sends an email, I'm not really pleased to be stuck here not being selected for the team. When the next transfer window comes around, I want to depart. So obviously this one doesn't make sense. The player agreed to a pre-contract and you can't leave the club until the end of the season. That's just how the pre-contract works. They negotiate the deal um, with six months or less to go on the contract and then he departs at the end of the season. But obviously 
the players in this game mode are not smart enough to realize that they are going to be leaving. They just have to wait till the end of the season. So they're still sending these emails about, I'm not happy and I want to leave in the next transfer window. This next one comes from Rob. He says that he got Fabinho in the best defenders shortlist for the UEFA Team of the Year 2020. So let's take a look at the photo. It says UEFA Team of the Year 2020 defenders shortlist. Players performances for a European club in 2020 were thoroughly analyzed by a team of experts with football supporters casting their votes to determine the UEFA Team of the Year 2020. With the final lineup to be announced on January 13th, our predicted defense line consists of the following players. Fabinho from Liverpool, Varane from Real Madrid, Coverhell from Real Madrid, and Laporte from Manchester City. Now, Fabinho is the odd one out there. He's usually a center defensive midfielder and should not be in the defender's shortlist. Now, just so I was correct, I double-checked, and when you go to search players in career mode, if you go to the defensive positions, the game lets you pick from right back, right wing back, center back, left back, left wing back and there's no CDM there but if you go to the midfielder section CDM pops up so at least I was correct on this one um, Fabinho should not be there based on his position now I'm not sure what you officially call it but you know that area of the transfer thing where it gives you like a suggestion like how much you should offer and stuff well this image was sent in by Nohi Cuba and I probably said that wrong but he said he was recommended to offer a wage from 6.4 thousand to 9,000 but his wage at the moment for this player was 19.5. He offered the 9,000 recommended wage and the offer was rejected by the player because it was insulting to the player. So pretty much he got screwed over, the player rejected. Now as you can see it says weekly wage of 19.5k but the secretary whatever you want to call it said pick between 6.4 and 9,000 to convince him. Obviously that didn't work so it does uh, make me question why the secretary would actually tell you to offer 10,000 less. He's 25 years old, it's not like he was like 35 or something that he would take a wage cut. No one would take a 10,000 a week wage cut. This next one comes from Arno. He said he redeemed the scout of future staffing that you can do on the EA Sports catalog and he returned with an 82 potential player. So obviously when you redeem one of these scout of future staffings, you get an email that says the scout has returned after he's gone and done his thing for a week or two. And it says, hey boss, our scout has returned with a young player that he feels can become world class. The lad is very talented and looks to have a bright future. It's now on our end to make sure we can help grow and train him to be the best he can. And usually when you redeem the Scout of Future staffing, you expect your Scout to return with someone who has at least 85 and above potential. The higher the better, obviously. But when he returned for Arno, he gave him Stefano Colombo, who has a potential of 82. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it there, so I think you can see it too. I don't understand how a player who has a potential of 82 can be considered a future star. I mean, a, an 82 overall player isn't that bad, but I wouldn't consider them to be a future star. I don't really understand how scout a future star can bring a player worth 82 potential. I think because it's part of the EA catalog, there's only like five or six times you can redeem this thing. I think it should at least give you someone special or someone that has the potential to be really, really special rather than give you an average player with an 82 potential. To me, that is not really a future star. This next one comes from Mustafa. He says, players on international duty still appear in the club training sessions. So we're going to test this out. But first off, he showed me his clip. He had Marcelo on international duty, but Marcelo was a defender in one of the sessions. So we're now on FIFA 19 career mode and you can see international duty has come up from the 6th to the 12th of September. We have a few players out like De Gea and stuff. So I'm going to test out De Gea. So we're now on the 8th of September. So let's start the training drill. De Gea should be gone. Look at that. They're all on international duty. So let's start a training session here. So you can't actually select the players that are out on duty like um, De Gea and stuff. But the problem is if you pick another player and you do a drill that needs a goalkeeper. Let's say I do shooting. Easy one-on-one -on -one against the keeper. If we begin the training, you'll probably see De Gea come up. So if we pass it to the keeper, you'll see the name De Gea come up. So if he's on international duty, he should not be in the training sessions. But it is nice of him to come back and do some club training sessions as well. But obviously this does not make any sense. Like he should not be anywhere near the training fields. He should be away wherever the national team is. So even though you can't pick them directly, if you were to do a drill that requires a goalkeeper and stuff, they will still come back. So if you need something else to watch, make sure you check out the previous episode in the series. Click the card right now, it'll take you to that video. Remember, there's a link in the description for you if you want to buy some Real Life Ultimate Team cards. And if you want to watch another FIFA 19 video, hit the thumbnail on your screen. And I'll see you next time.